This is MSI's X370 Xperia Titanium motherboard. Now this is certainly a step in the right direction when it comes to high-end AMD motherboards and we're going to take a look at it so do stick around. So first things first, a quick look around the box. You can see that it's pretty stylish and has a lot of the new features including actually the full specs of the motherboard so if you're interested I'll leave them here and of course you can pause the screen if you like. But moving on to inside the box you get the usual stuff so SATA cables, rear IO shield, obviously motherboard manual which is going to be particularly important for this board if you are planning on using it for what looks to be its main intended purpose of fairly high-end overclocking. So do take a look at that one and of course the usual bits and pieces as well. Taking a look at the board we can see that it's fairly stylish. It comes in all white with sort of silver looking heat sinks on it. It also has white on the back as well with white LEDs scattered around the board including under the chipset heatsink and stuff like that. So overall a pretty stylish motherboard. There's no RGB here although there is RGB support through the uh, LED header on the bottom that we'll talk about in a second. As with a lot of the other AM AM4 motherboards, the main thing that catches my eye first is the new socket, the AM4 socket right in the center, with the reinforced DDR4 RAM, which I put reinforced in quotes effectively as that's a little bit of a strange one and is more aesthetic than functional, but still pretty cool to look at. Just above the socket, you'll find the four and the eight pin CPU power connectors. Now, from what I understand, you can leave that four pin unplugged if you're not doing heavy overclocking, but it is nice to have the option if you are planning on pushing a total of, I think, up to 300 watts through the CPU, so pretty mad. On the uh, right hand side at the top, you also have the debug LED and multiple fan headers, a total of six on this board, uh, dotted around the board, mostly at the top and in the center, although one at the bottom corner as well. On the top right hand corner, you actually have not only multiple fan headers, but also a debug display, which is actually really useful when overclocking. And just below that, you have a couple of LEDs that allow you to see uh, you know, what stage you're boot through, and especially just straight up what issue you're having if the motherboard isn't posting. So that's a very nice uh, combination of things. Just below the CPU socket you'll find the VR Boost chip which um, I believe is meant to give better more stable voltage to the CPU although they claim it does many miraculous things so uh, perhaps that is worth uh, testing at uh, future dates. Uh, you also have a couple of other fan headers. No LED header here so if you're planning on using the Wraith Spire cooler you will need to use uh, some sort of extension cable if you want the LEDs to be active here so just something to, to bear in mind and you also have reinforced PCI slots there. You have two for the actual ones that go to the chip with the bottom one, uh, the bottom X16 size slot uh, going through the chipset and therefore not recommended for graphics cards and not supported in three-way SLI configurations or anything like that. So something to bear in mind. And the M.2 shield on the top M.2 slots as this board actually has two M.2 slots as well. So also pretty impressive. When it comes to other storage on the board, you also have U.2, which I believe knocks out one of the M.2 slots, if not both of them. So do check the manual for that one and six SATA ports as well. You also have a couple of uh, USB 3 front panel headers basically right next to each other with the uh, USB 3.1 front panel header down at the bottom. The rear IO is actually a pretty nice setup. You have a nice combination of USB 2, USB 3 and 3.1 and Type C as well as a very nice Intel NIC, the Intel uh, 211AT uh, and also a very nice overall audio setup as well with SPDIF and gold plated connections if that uh, helps anything. On the left hand side of the board you have the audio section obviously split PCB audio you also have a rather nice cover over it as well which can be removed if you want to and uh, this is a, a Realtek ALC 1220 setup which is actually fairly similar to a lot of the other setups on the market for this kind of price range of motherboard uh, it's still obviously a very nice overall setup so if you're looking for fairly decent motherboard audio this one certainly has you covered Right next to the front panel header, you've actually got a six pin PCIe power connector. This is to provide a little bit better support for overclocking multiple graphics cards. So if you're really pushing it, then you can use that just fine. The rest of the bottom IO is fairly standard. You've got USB 2 front panel headers as well as an LED header and the USB 3.1 front panel header as well, which is pretty nice to see. You also have hardware buttons for power and reset and a hardware overclocking dial, which is actually very nice and actually really easy to overclock. Now the settings are a little bit Bit interesting as they do go up to uh, 1.575 volts so very very high on the voltage there and certainly not recommended uh, but at the same time in theory you can get your chip to overclock to I think 4.3 uh, or 4.4 gigahertz so pretty crazy. Speaking of overclocking it's actually fairly easy to do. Now you can use the dial on the bottom of the board if you want to go with what I feel are relatively high voltages for what they're going for although they're also fairly high clock speeds and something that I haven't personally been able to really get to with my chips 
chips, the 1800X and the 1700, so that is something to, to bear in mind. Uh, you can also overclock normally through the BIOS. It's actually a very nice overall experience, so uh, certainly nothing to, to miss there. It's a, a very easy and also fairly detailed experience as well, so if you are looking to overclock, this is certainly a pretty good board to do it on. The rest of the BIOS is a joy to use. For me, the MSI BIOSes are just uh, very well laid out, very easy to use, very intuitive, and they've certainly taken the UEFI aspects and made them very enjoyable, so that is pretty nice. You still have the boot priority menu at the top that you can just click and drag around. You also have all of your settings very easily laid out, and of course, overclocking available too, and uh, MSI's lovely board explorer option where you can look around the board and see exactly what's connected. Uh, it's great for troubleshooting, and of course, the uh, hardware monitor as well, so you can change fan curves and stuff like that too. This board is absolutely fantastic for the precision overclocker who wants to not only push the CPU but also the GPU as well. I think it's pretty fantastic for that sort of thing. If you're someone who doesn't necessarily care about overclocking or necessarily that it's the one of the only white motherboards you can get right now, especially for the AM4 platform, then I don't know that this board is necessarily going to be for you. But if you are someone who's interested in overclocking, especially CPU and GPU, multiple GPUs, and just want a really high-end stylized build, then this is pretty awesome. Now, the biggest con for the board by far has to be the price, which is currently, at the time of filming in the UK, £300. Now that's certainly expensive, it's actually cheaper than its Z270 version, so that's pretty cool, but at the same time you are still talking about a lot of money, uh, so it's just something to bear in mind that's certainly a premium class of motherboard, with a premium set of features to match though. When it comes to scoring, I think I'm going to go for a 4 for Vive Money, I think it has to be a 5 for performance and a 4.5 for functionality, a 4.5 for styling as well, and a 4.5 for Tetsu Maybe score with a gold award. It's a fantastic motherboard, lots of overclocking options to be had, and certainly Certainly one of the most stylish uh, motherboards for non-RGB setups, so if that's something you're interested in, uh, feel free to take a look at the links in the description down below. So as I said, if you want to see any more about this motherboard, check out the links in the description down below. If you want to help me out in any way, I'd really appreciate if you could share the video, subscribe, let me know what you think of it in the comments down below, and of course use the Overclockers UK or Amazon affiliate links in the description down below, just click them before you buy stuff, and it helps me out massively. Otherwise, uh, that's pretty much that really. If you want to check out uh, some other videos, I'll leave some over here for you and the subscribe button on this side and otherwise uh, yeah as I said let me know what you think of the motherboard in the comments down below how are you enjoying the Ryzen launch uh, and let me know what questions you have about the motherboard or Ryzen CPUs in the comments down below too otherwise thank you for watching and we'll see you all in the next video